Greetings, YouTube. This week there was a news piece about a man that used a canine shock collar on his children. When arrested, it was explained that that's a very poor method of child discipline. His response was that he hadn't used it as a method of discipline. He just did it because it was funny. Another piece of news from last week about a man that threw a three-month-old baby out of a moving vehicle. The baby died. When questioned about this as he traveled from the courthouse to a police vehicle, his response was, it's a tough game. Now most civilized people, upon hearing about either of these pieces of news, would respond that this, these people, these men, are monsters. But the reality is, is they're not monsters. There are no monsters. They're human beings. And the sad and terrifying thing is that every one of us, our fellow humans, is capable of doing what these men did. And so long as we place violent, chaotic acts into a category of the other, we won't understand them. Now I realize that understanding them is going to be very difficult, and you probably may need a degree of some variety to really grasp why a person does what they do. But by putting them into a category of, we can't understand this because they're monsters, you eliminate the possibility of truly comprehending why people react the way they do and act the way they do, and then preventing them from doing it. Because if you can see the signs of a person's mental instability, then you can predict what they might do and hopefully prevent that action from happening. Now, I realize it's difficult, and I'm not talking about like Tom Cruise like division of pre-crime. But if someone drives drunk repeatedly and shows no sign of stopping, you can predict that they're going to drive drunk again. If someone is a kleptomaniac, you can predict they're going to steal again. And if someone does violent, chaotic, uncivilized things repeatedly, they're probably going to do it again. Now, until a person actually commits a crime, you can't bring them uh, charges against them. I'm not advocating uh, some form of vigilante justice or so something where the police arrest people just because they might do something. But in the case of the person throwing the baby from a car, he had a history of violence. He had current charges against him. They just had not been, paperwork had not been completed. In, in the past, he'd shown that he had violent tendencies towards both his own child and the mother of that child. I believe it was his girlfriend. And yet, there was still contact between the two of them. Now, I'm also not advocating that like a restraining order is the only response. Sometimes a restraining order is the trigger that sets a person like this off. And in reality, a restraining order is a piece of paper. It doesn't do anything. In the book, The Gift of Fear, the author discusses a police officer who once talked to a woman who had just filed the paperwork to get a restraining order against her uh, husband. And she was convinced that somehow this would snap him out of the situation and help him recover and be less violent, particularly towards her. The police officer filed the report, and he looked at her and said, I'm going to put this report in this file over here, and the next time I refer to it, it's going to be because you've been murdered. That sometimes you can't have authority fix the problem. You have to do something yourself. I have a hard time believing that the man that used a shot collar on his children, that uh, he hadn't given any indications that he was a violent, unstable person. That people around him didn't notice that maybe he shouldn't be allowed to, alone with, with children, his or anyone else's. But people don't want to think about that. People would always want to assume that everyone around them is doing neutral, if not positive, things. That people wouldn't hurt their own children, their friends, their family, their associates, strangers. The reality is sometimes they do. And often the signs are there. There is evidence. It's not hidden. It's not a surprise. In reality, that psychopath living in the house next to you wasn't a nice, friendly neighbor. There were signs, and people just didn't pay attention. These aren't monsters made out of thin air. They're human beings who can be understood and hopefully can be stopped.